you here. Okay, why do we use brake ducts? It's really simple. It's to keep brakes cool. Uh, brakes on your car, especially on track, uh, they are, what they are is they are heat generators. Uh, and, you know, what I talked about before is a Mustang, 3,800 pounds, hurtling down the straightaway at 120, 130 miles an hour. That is a bunch of kinetic energy in motion. So to stop that kinetic energy, you know, object in motion says to stay in motion until acted upon an outside source. Well, stopping could be done by a guardrail, a concrete barrier, a tree, but those really aren't the preferred methods of slowing a car down. Brakes are. So the brakes take that kinetic energy and turn to heat energy. Energy. So that's why we get, if you're on track, you have to cool the brake ducts because they get really, really hot. I can tell you on, on my car, I'm seeing typically uh, 100 or 1,200 degrees rotor temperature, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. So we have brake pads that match the, the uh, temperature range of what the rotors are running at, and we'll talk about that in a little bit too. Because we have, we have some of our customers with GT500s that are – really really fast and uh running 1600 degrees rotor temperature which is really a lot that's like a race car but we they've got pads that will go up to 2000 degrees so that kind of takes care of that so let's go to my brake ducts and my brake ducts are, are pretty unique uh and th this design has been around for a very long time but as you can see the inlet is a three inch and oval and that, that is done specifically. We'll prop up here. Uh, okay, the reason that's done that, if we could lose the title down here. Okay, now I got to move this way. Look this way. There. The other way because. Yeah. Okay. okay, here's the inside of the rotor. And the reason I go to the, the squished oval design is if you match that up to the rotor, you can see that 100% of the air goes into the eye of the rotor. That way? Yep. Here we go. The 100% of the air, because it's squished, goes into the eye of the rotor. Now, there's, I don't have an example, but there's a lot of like four inch ducts out there, and you think, well, four inch is bigger, it's going to be better. The problem is, if this is three, three like that, and it's squished, a four inch is going to come out and it's actually going to go across the face of the rotor. So what happens is that as the air comes in, it's going to hit the face of the rotor. It's going to disrupt the airflow. It's going to cause some turbulence as it rolls over and into the center, number one. Secondly, you're going to get uneven, uneven, wear, un, uneven brake pad wear because you're running different temperatures inside and outside. And we pretty much uh, proved that we're doing the Mustang Challenge in 2010, I think, we were did, did some testing with, with my car and uh, the uh, FR 500 S cars back to back. They had four inch brake ducts. We had three, I had my th three inch right here. And the uh, rotor, the uh, t temperatures were similar, except for the GT 500 with a four inch had a different outside and inside temperature, which explained why we used brake pads at a different rate. So that's why we use the oval. And this is for S197, and oh, speaking of brake temperatures, what we talked about before, brake rotor temperature paint. Uh, thank you. Prop just happened to appear on my list, and this is this is what we use. It uh, it goes on like it's this orange color, but as it gets hot, uh, it che keeps changing colors, and it'll stop changing color at the maximum maximum temperature. So that's how we know how to do our brake ducts. And it comes with this nifty little card that uh, you can see the different colors that give you different temperatures. Like I say, mine typically around 1200 degrees. It's a pretty cool little paint thing. Uh, some of our customers are up to 1600 degrees. Now this is, this is, to me, this is like the coolest thing ever having just one color. But back when I started out uh, in racing, we had as many as five different colors. And you have to put like five different paint stripes on there and see whenever they kick off. Then that's going to be your high temperature. This is so easy, just one color and it goes. So anyway, this is for the, the S, S197. This is actually the second design we came up with. This is the SN95. And actually, there's another piece to this. Uh, it's a two-piece for the SN95s. And you can see it's oval. Oh, somebody asked on the uh, question for a Fox body, 
if they go to upgrade the, the brakes and brake ducts, what your spindle to use, uh, use if you've got a Fox and you're converting, go to a 96 or newer uh, SN95 spindle. The reason for that is the geometry, the steering geometry is better and also brake ducts fit better. So if, if, if you're doing a conversion on a Fox, SN95, 96 and newer uh, is the way to go. So that's SN95. An interesting thing, this is for the 550. The 550 with its bigger rotors, we didn't have to squish it. We can just use a straight three inch and it perfectly goes inside. So that's kind of like the, uh, the, the, you know, the brake ducts on the spindle side. Now, the other question, we had a other question on where do, where do you get, uh, if you don't have a car that's got, already has the like ovals or, you know, to pull in air to use for a brake duct, uh, what do you do? Well, we have a universal, we call it universal brake ducting kit. Brake duct, brake ducting. And the reason we call it universal is there's so many different front fascia designs I mean, we would go crazy trying to come up with specific inlets for every one of them, where uh, just to keep it more cost effective, we go to what we call universal. And what that is, is a, it's a little duct and uh, it's, it's a form plastic. And what we do is have you locate a spot that's the closer you get to the center of the car, the higher the pressure, the more desirable it is. Off to the edge, uh, the Air is moving quicker around the side of the car, which means the pressure uh, goes goes up, goes down, uh, and this is effective. That's you know we learn all this aerodynamic stuff in the academy. So anyway, we give this, and what you do is just trim it to fit wherever it is, and to make it even simpler, you trim it to fit, drill some holes, and we use zip ties to hold it in place. Uh, I mean it couldn't be simpler than that. And of course, a three-inch duct uh, goes on the back, and away you go. We ran into a situation, or we ran into a situation with the GT 500s with the track back. They've got so much radiator coolers in front, uh, it's pretty much impossible to get air anywhere from the center of the car. Uh, the, uh, what, we, what we've done, because a lot of people don't want to take their fog lights out, uh, what we've done, we did, we, we've got a GT 500 in the shop that that uh, we're updating and is going to get the new rear suspension, which is information coming in weeks. Uh, and what we what we found, we're going through the car doing our nut and bolt check and going through everything. I, mean, I could just tell straight away the front rotors were really, really hot just by the color. And I looked at the brake pads and they were like super hot too. So uh, we started looking a little deeper and what happened, there was these little like three inch holes in the, uh, in the lower radiator uh, cover and the uh, brake ducts had actually come off, uh, so it was getting very, very little air to the brake ducts. So we came up with we came up with a really cool design. It's the first time we've done this, and it's uh, it, it's pretty cool. Let me kind of show you what we did. Okay, ah, here we are. Cars and Coffee Live. This is a NACA duct. Uh, for those, I mean, everybody, a lot of people have seen NACA ducts, and uh, this is kind of the best picture I could find to give the best description. But essentially what it is, it's a flat duct. It's narrow in the front, and it widens, as it widens out at the back and goes deeper, it actually draws air down as opposed to a scoop. Uh, on the top, this actually is more efficient. It draws the air down. It doesn't. It doesn't in, 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 uh, increase drag at all. And uh, and NACA duct was developed back. I'm going to say 70 years ago. And NACA stands for National and Aer Aeronautics Committee or something like that. I wish you had studied it before. Well, I wrote it down, but I, it, it's on my desk. Anyway, that was the precursor to NASA. So uh, this is where the NACADAC come from, and they're used heavily in airplanes and used heavily in race cars for getting air in without, without, without disrupting airflow uh, and without you know, creating drag. So what we did, we took this concept, and uh, this is the very outside, and you can see this radiator right there, and it's really hard to you know, get a, a duct in there. So we used this NACA duct off to the side, and uh, Kirk got really clever, and he made it look just like the diamond shape uh, of, the, uh, of the lower radiator. 
But this way we're pulling air in and because of that, we got an absolutely straight line back to the brake ducts. Uh, and you know that that's that's going to give you know a lot better airflow. The brakes are going to run cooler, and the, the pads will last longer. The rotors will last longer. Now we use specifically we use this type of uh, there. We use uh, we use silicone hose, and. The reason I do it, this is like temperature 600 degrees. So, I mean, it, it's really good. But the other thing, this is this is about as good as it gets. This is actually aircraft hose. This is what they use in airplanes. You know, and if, if it's good enough for airplanes, it's good enough for our cars. I know there's a lot of other uh, brake ducting materials out there. But this, this is the one we used to offer the neoprene. But, you know, it just only costs a little bit more. And it's, it's just so much better. Yeah, it's got 600 degree temperature in the silicone, and uh, that's what's in all of our kits. You know, they get the the in the brake ducting, you get you know the ducts, some zip ties to hold this in place, some longer zip ties to zip it around the, the frame rail, and then of course the uh, three inch hose clamps to put it all on. So that's kind of our, our little thing on brake ducts. I see if I had any other questions on brake ducts. Uh, Fox body. Oh yeah, there's another question about you know if you don't have a car. It already has ducks in the front. What do you do? Well, universal. I mean, that's that's as, that's as easy as it gets. Just remember, the closer you get to the center of the car, the higher the pressure. Typically, what I look for is like you've got your you know your lower radiator opening. I look typically I'm right at the outside edge of that, which is just not not that far off the center, which means you're still at a high pressure point. And the uh, high pressure is uh, is what you want. You want to get that air in into the center of the eye of the rotor so that it, because the rotor's uh, cool from the center out. That's what the veins are for. And I, I also should mention <laughs> two-piece slotted rotors. I mean, that's all we ever use. Never, ever use drilled rotors. The reason is they're going to crack at the, at the drill holes. Absolutely, 100%, unconditionally guaranteed they will crack at the holes. Also, if you got a lot of holes around there, you're missing surface area. But what the the, uh, what the, uh, the uh, uh, grooves do is they actually do serve two functions. One, they clear brake dust out. And secondly, uh, there's, they uh, release gases. Now, as a brake duct, and as a brake on the, on the uh, rotor, as it's on there, it'll build up gas pressure at the, very, at the trailing edge of the rotor. And as it does, I mean, you don't get as much braking. Back in the Saline program, we couldn't use slotted rotors. So the brake pads, actually, when they came off for a change, we never looked at the back, always had to look at the front because the back of the, of the pads were always, you know, almost new and the fronts were gone. They, they, they came out as a pure wedge. That's because of all the gas built up in the back. Another thing is you always want to have these pointing forward. Like it, so it goes like that. And you can actually double check on that if you see the veins you can see the veins are, have, have, a, have a flow to them. So you always want to make sure these are going forward. We had we, a couple of times we had cars come in for us to do work on, and the rotors were on backwards. And they were one, one uh, customer kept going through brakes and rotors, and the guys working on this car kept putting the rotors on backwards. So they weren't cooling. They were pulling hot air in, so they weren't cooling at all. So it's really important to keep them facing forward. 